Well, Merry Christmas to you. Man, it, it's here. It is Christmas Day. And depending on what time you're watching this, it's either Christmas morning and all the things that that brings or it's Christmas evening, whatever time you've watched it. Man, Merry, Merry Christmas to you. This time of year is so exciting, not just because of the day in itself, which is, which is great, but this is one of those unique days that it's like the Advent season starts to unfold weeks before even the actual Christmas day. The things that we hear and the things that we see and the important parts of all the things that lead us up to this time. So Merry Christmas to you. I'm sure you're excited and just want to thank you for taking a few minutes and um, being here together with us. A few weeks ago in church, I, I talked about the importance of like slowing down a little bit though during this time and paying attention to the senses, to the things that God created in us. And I read you this quote and I want to read it to you again. It says, a God who is everywhere can also seem like he's nowhere. We believe in what we can touch, what we can see, what we can hear, smell, and taste. We're not angels without bodies, but we are sensual creatures in the true word of sensuality. We have five senses and we are present in the world through those senses. We know through them and communicate through them and, and are open to each other and the world only through those senses. In God, having created our, our nature, respects how this operates. Thus God deals with us through our senses. Jesus, who walked the roads of Palestine, could be seen and touched and heard. In the incarnation, God became physical because we are creatures of the senses who at one point needed a God with some skin. And so this idea of paying attention to what we're seeing and hearing and touching is really from God. And he uses those things to draw our hearts back towards him. So even though during this season of anticipating, I encourage us to slow down and to pay attention because it can become such a time of to-dos and, and supposed tos but we're here on this day. So let's remember this and remember well. And I asked you to pay attention over this past few weeks to what you see and what you hear and what you smell and what you feel and what you taste and to ask God, what are you showing me through this? Because it's by the senses that we learn and we gain insights and internalize all that is true and helpful for life. If ever there were a truth that needed to be internalized in every way, it's the amazing story of a God who spoke all things into existence and continues to sustain creation with his breath, yet who loved his creation so much that he himself came as a helpless baby to touch us at our point of need. When we were in understanding the immensity of his love for his creation, he spoke his love in terms that we could comprehend. It's the sound of a baby's cry on a cold night, the smell of a lowly animal filled stable, the rough texture of a feeding trough filled with that coarse straw, the brightness of a new star in the dark night of sky and the taste of the bread of life to feed the souls of all of us. And since that night more than 2,000 years ago that divided time itself into BC and AD, those whose lives have been changed by this baby boy have created dozens of symbols and traditions in their efforts to express an event, both human and divine. All the senses have been called into play by the deep longing to share a very personal experience of this cosmic and eternal change point in our history. So we're gonna take a few minutes on this Christmas day and we're gonna connect with these things once again. Okay, I'm gonna lead you through something personally or as a group, of, if your family's watching this together. In fact, this is, this is really meant to be for a group, so if you're watching this by yourself right now and there's some other people around, I would just stop and go, man, will you watch this with me? Because it's actually participation and a, and a discussion a little bit. So this is what I'm gonna ask you to do. 
In a moment, you can push pause on this video and I'm gonna ask you to go and get five things. The first one is to identify something you've seen this season. Something that was beautiful, something that jumped out of you, something, man, this was my favorite thing that I saw this season. And write that down so remember. It could be something in your house. It could be something on the tree. Um, identify that. The second thing is something you've heard this season. It could be a certain song, a certain video. If you have your phone or tablet, why don't you pull that up and get ready to play that for other people. It could be a, a song you heard. Um, yeah, anything, anything that you heard. Make sure you bring that back or have ready for that. The third thing is get something that tastes so good, like a small bite. Now this is that moment if you're watching it in the morning and your parents are saying, kids, hold off on the cookies till later. Parents, I'm just gonna say, like, just give them that little piece. It could be like a cookie, it could be a piece of caramel. It could just be something sweet. Um, but something that tastes so good, just one bite, go and grab that and hold that and be ready. The other thing is get something that you like to feel of. It could be a warm blanket, a, a sweater, something on the tree, uh, something that reminds you of that, something to feel. And the final thing is something that you just love to smell, that sweet aroma. Like I'm smelling this hot cider sitting next to me. Man, it just smells good and it brings me to a place. So go ahead and grab those five, something that you've seen, something that you've heard, something that you've tasted, something that you feel and something that uh, you just love to smell. Go ahead and push pause, scatter, and uh, come back when you have it all and then push play and we'll continue on together. All right, now let's start doing this together. We're gonna to start with something that you've seen, the, the sights of Christmas. I love this when Jesus said in Matthew 13, when he's uh, talking to his disciples and they're starting to realize and see things, he says, man, blessed are your eyes because they see, for truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but didn't see it. There's some beauty in the things that we see. So. What are some of the, your favorite things you've seen this Advent season? What is that thing you wrote down? Be super specific. How has God shown himself through that? Share all of those things. So go ahead and push pause and just each person shared, this is what my favorite thing I saw. And this is maybe what God showed me through this. So when I see this, like this is something that, uh, how I see God differently through that. Go ahead and share. All right, I hope that was uh, fun to hear each other is what the favorite thing they saw. The next thing that we're going to go into is really something so unique. It's the sounds of Christmas. In Proverbs 20, 12, it's the ears that hear and the eyes that see the Lord has made them both. And I know for some of you, you can't wait to hear, start to hear the sounds of Christmas. And for some of you, you have like uh, discipline to hold off or whatever it is, but you've been hearing it. And I'm sure that you've heard so many things, the joy and laughter of kids during this season, uh, the resounding bells outside of the store from the Salvation Army, um, the crinkling of paper, the carolers singing, maybe some music that you heard last night at church. Maybe there's just some sounds you hear in the parking lots, you know, going to the mall and it's not always a play, but you hear these sounds and they draw you in. So what is the one you found? Um, that you've identified, that you've come back with, be specific and then share like, how has God shown himself to you through this? So if you've grabbed a song or video or whatever you've done, man, take some time and just play that for each other and, and share with each other. This is why it's so impactful for you. So go ahead and push pause and then each person share their favorite thing they've heard this time of year. Now, as you've all shared the different things, that we, we want to stay on this for a little bit longer. Like, man, let's, let's use our voices and, and let's sing something together. Uh, Chris is going to lead us through this. Let's take a moment and just sing this together. And um, I'm going to join along with you as I'm watching this with my family as well. The first 
Saints know well The angels didn't say Was searching for shepherds In fields as they lay In fields where they Lay keeping their sheep On a cold winter's night Now oh so deep Know well, know well, know well, know well Born is the king of Israel They looked up in saw a star Shining in the east Beyond them far Into the earth In gave great light And so we continued Both day and night No well, no well, no well, no well Born is the king of Israel Then let us all with one accord Sing praises to our heavenly Lord That hath made heaven and earth of night And with his blood mankind has by No well, no well, no well, no well Born is the King of Israel No well, no well, no well, no well Born is the King of Israel Man, that was great. I loved just the, the ability to sing and hear. And and there may have been something even in that song as we sang together that you're like, man, that was that was the thing. There's something meaningful and impactful. Identify that and, and consider sharing that with your, with your group, your family, or maybe a little later in uh, this time. But we're gonna continue on and talk around the touching, the, the feels of Christmas. I, I'm imagining that first morning of Jesus' birth. Imagine feeling the soft skin of a baby, the, who is God, who made the most touchable things for us even when we were far away, or the tender embrace of holding something or holding a child. Or, you know, maybe it was, during this time it was like just the coolness of the December air that you felt and touched. Maybe the needles on the tree as you were putting it up Maybe it was the touch of your children or a neighbor or a handshake, something of reconciliation. There was something different that you felt during this time that you identified, but you identified it. So take some time to talk about what you're now holding and, and, and what that means uh, to you and, and how you, God has shown himself to you through this. So go ahead and push pause and each person share about what they felt. We're going to continue on with the smells of Christmas. This is the one, no matter how old you are, like when you smell something, it brings you back to certain places. And God loves using this idea around smells. Second Corinthians, he, the human writes, Paul writes, for we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ. Among those who are being saved and those who are gathering, the, the sacrifices to God, up the smoke and the, the, the aroma to God is a pleasing, pleasing sight. And I have so many smells and amazing times of this year. My mom who passed away, one of the things that I remember is her cooking these Christmas cookies and breads the weeks leading up to Christmas. And I'd come home from school and I'm like, oh, mom. And, and I'm like, can I have one? And she's like, Nope, you need to wait to that day. So sometimes smells, they just draw us in and we want it, but it's, sometimes it's just so good to like, it's an anticipation. But what are your favorite smells of this current Advent season? 
be super specific. It could be that thing you're holding that you're like, I want to taste this. You're going to get that, but just smell it. And like, this is the aroma. Um, this is the things that I remember. This is the sweet aroma to God and be specific. And what does it mean to have this aroma? And why do you think God even equates like our behavior, our actions as a sweet aroma? So go ahead and push pause and just share what your favorite smells of this time of year are, or even your favorite smells this morning. And finally, and I know you've been waiting for this, the tastes of Christmas, the things that you're tasting and sensing, whatever your family history might be. Um, it seems like food is such a vital part <laughs> of the Christmas season. It's celebratory. God created celebratory harvest and festivals to, to remember. And the kitchens are the place to gather to take, maybe taste the cookies, the pies, the turkeys, the roasts, the winter vegetables that are in place and the special breads, all of those things. It seems to be a gathering space. It's like a, a, a sensation of what we taste and feel. And hopefully it's not just consuming it, but it's like, oh, is so good. Maybe it's a steaming hot mug of hot chocolate, or like I've been mentioning, the cider, the rich coffee um, during this Christmas time. And think about it, that Christmas is a giant season long tasting party sometimes. But I want us to slow down and identify the one taste, that one thing that you've grabbed. In Psalms 34, eight, it says that taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is he who takes refuge in him. Psalm 119, it says, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey. And even as you take this bite of this, this thing that you want to taste, remember that it, this is like, man, God, you are sweeter than honey. And as you taste it, that's what God's words are like. That's what God's place is like. So look at what you selected to taste and what are you anticipating right now? And once you push pause, I just want you, if you can, one at a time to take a bite and talk about the things you're tasting. Is it sweet? Is it sour? Is it strong? And then take a pause and talk about why you love it. And then talk about how God's words can be sweet just like that. So go ahead and push pause and begin one at a time just tasting and slowing down. All right, hopefully your times of just discussing and remembering the things you saw and the things you heard and the things you felt and the things you smelled and man, that final thing that you tasted, that those senses that God created is the thing that Jesus became for us on this Christmas day. And even though those, these, uh, these senses draw us to maybe uh, the celebration of Christmas, it also should draw us to the humanity that Jesus took on for us. As we close this time together, I just wanna read you this Psalm that talks about these things. Psalm 115 says this, Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Because of your love and faithfulness, why do the nations say, where is their God? You see, our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes that cannot see, they have ears but cannot hear, noses that cannot smell. They have hands but they cannot feel, but cannot walk, and nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will be all those who trust in them. But we shall trust in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. You who fear him trust in the Lord. He is your help and shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people. He will bless those who fear him, small and great alike. So may the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth is given to mankind. It is not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence, it is we who extol the Lord both now and forever. Praise the Lord. Hopefully this Christmas day, the things you've sensed and felt is praise to God. So give him the glory that he deserves. 
I hope you have or have had an amazing Christmas and that you've connected with our Father in heaven in a unique and special way today. God bless you and thank you for being a part of this together.